All right, so today what we're going to look at is, is basically the, the relocation of your new hires and including your, your college hires. So why are we talking about it today? That, that's one of the first things that we'll look at and then we'll get right into what are the best practices that we've seen uh, from the industry. So these are some of our clients, some of the clients that we've spoken to, uh, and just some of the research that we've done around this area. And then we'll finish off with a little checklist, a quick seven pointer as to you know really high level. What are the what are those seven things that you really do need to, to think about? Great. So uh, in order to get a feel for the audience and where everyone's at, we're going to go ahead and uh, ask you a couple of poll questions. Uh, the first one, and it should be popping up on your screen right now, is uh, do you anticipate your company relocating more or less interns and new hires over the next 12 months? Um, if you can just go ahead and select one of those options. Uh, we'll just give it a few seconds here. All right, great. It looks like most everyone has submitted, so we're going to go ahead and close this poll. Uh, Jeff, interesting results. It looks like 50% of the attendees are going to increase relocations uh, over of new hires over the next um, couple of months. 38% uh, no change whatsoever, and 13% uh, are actually going to decrease. Yes, yeah, so I remember running this a similar poll last year. I think we had a few more in the in the, the more category, um, so, and I think that, that shifted now to a no change. So that could be interesting. Could be some sounding bites, I guess, for the for the future. Great. And the next question, uh, just to get a feel for the audience, is what benefits do you currently provide your new hires? Again, you should see this poll up on your screen. If you can just take a moment to submit the answer that uh, is most applicable to your organization. All right, great. It looks like Almost everyone has submitted an answer. We're just going to give it a few more seconds. All right, we're going to go ahead and close this here. So just some, some more interesting results. Um, to start off, no one offers full relocation support. I guess that's to be expected. Yep. Um, and also, no one offers zero support. So we're split between 29% a cash allowance, 29% uh, budget towards the use of relocation services, uh, and 57% a mixture of above on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, and, and that's interesting because so again, when we ran this last year, a similar poll, a similar surveys last year, what we saw a more cash allowance um, support being provided. And so that you know, a shift towards, it, I guess, more focus on the employee and providing them with more support. I think that's something that a trend that we've also seen, um, especially in the last six months. Um, so that it, it's good that the polls are indicating that as well. Okay, so Josh Burston um, of Burston by, De by Deloitte observed that the war for talent is over. And he said he stated that clearly the talent won. So with competition amongst companies to attract college or new hires at unprecedented levels, there is a greater importance on delivering the best onboarding experience for those new hires. Importantly, if relocating a college or new hire is involved, I think it's very critical that the relocation experience is world class, as it is the new hire's first major interaction as an employee of the company. Really, their overall experience is highly impacted by how they felt the company had supported them during that stressful time. So talent acquisition and club mobility teams have historically worked around the clock to ensure the best new hire experience. However, with the talent pool becoming more and more demanding and consistent and constantly looking uh, for new and innovative support from their employers, I guess the race is on for talent acquisition and mobility teams to really continue to transform the new hire experience. As we've seen, I guess, in the polls, a lot more companies are providing, or less of providing just the cash allowance and more towards a benefits-driven um, approach towards their new hires. 
So on, 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 the, on the next uh, few slides, we will examine the best practices for relocating and, and managing new hire relocations and how to make the, the most of the solutions that we have available today. So we'll take a look at how teams can really stay ahead and transform the way in which we do move new hires around the world, providing that really truly innovative experience. Okay. So one of the a few of the best practices is well, the first one is really around technology and, and data. So regardless of who owns the process around the actual relocation of new hires, it is imperative that all moves be authorized, managed, and data stored securely on a central data system or platform. By doing this, it gives all parties involved clear insight into how many new hires are moving, when, to, from, and where, and on what policies. So if you have different policies for different new hires, for example. This is critical to mitigate compliance risk, security risk, and control costs. The number of data points needed and scale of tasks required to be undertaken in the, in, to move in such a condensed period of time simply cannot be handled by a few spreadsheets or calendar reminders. Importantly, it helps to think about the following. One, drive towards a single source of, of, of data. Centralizing data will help the scheduling and volume challenges associated with handling such a high population over a short period of, of time. Implement consistent policies that limit the scope for exception requests and helps you to manage them. Thirdly, put in place consistent processes that allow you to collect and share the same information with new hires from the recruiting stage all the way until after they've settled, eliminating all those duplicate data requests you probably get around names, addresses, social security, um, other government issued IDs and, and, and things like that. Fourthly, make sure you have access to your data and reporting 24-7. A frantic midnight call from a distressed new hire or unexpected security threat can only be handled with the right data available immediately. And lastly, make sure that your data is secure and personal identifiable information about your new hires is not being emailed or stored around your company and vendor network throughout the coordination process where you cannot restrict or control access. So with a mobility platform in place, you will be able to initiate a move or a group of moves easily. You, you'll be able to input all necessary employee details or transfer them from your applicant tracking system or, or human capital management system You'll be able to outline the benefits and allowances to be received and instantly notify the appropriate teams, such as IT, security, onboarding, and payroll. By doing this, you can kick off automated workflows and reduce many, many manual tasks. So in their 2016 HR predictions report, Burson by Deloitte estimated that almost 60% of large companies are replacing, planning a replacement, or have recently replaced their core HR information systems. And really what they've made focus for those companies is really one, to make their systems much easier to, to use, and secondly, to create a more accurate database of their people and customers for analysis and decision making. And so really, most of these technologies, and they're all pretty much software as a system solutions, have the aim of making your work life better. And so, what this means for, for, for talent acquisition and global mobility teams is, is we should be jumping on that bandwagon too and, and using the technology that's available now, the cloud platforms that really enable centralized information, collaboration with global stakeholders, the automation of admin tasks and links between divergent systems like this of before. So the right support. So for most College new hires, this will be their first time relocating since I guess them and a few boxes were driven across the country by their parents to start college. However, despite their inexperience in the challenges and pitfalls of relocating to another city or country, most new hires will be millennials. And as such, generally tech savvy, resourceful when given the right tools and require less of the traditional support offered to other mobile populations. So here are a couple of things to look for for them. So one, 
have a think about moving much of their support to an online self-service environment, allowing them to manage their move in the same way they manage so many other aspects of their lives. Secondly, provide some online access to information about the location that they are going to, making sure it is all in one centralized place so it doesn't lead to more questions. Think about posting information such as, you know, where do I eat? You know, where do we drink? What are the parks, beaches, shops, the places to visit around the office? It will help them get acclimatized beforehand and reduce the number of questions that, that will be emailed or, or you'll have to speak to, to your new hires about. Another point is to really to look at tailoring information provided to your specific new hire populations. Building a community and allegiance is even more crucial when dealing with new hires still searching for the sense of unity that they're used to experience at college. So things like, things like you know, what does it feel like to be a new hire at your company? Where do your new hires go to eat lunch, go to drinks after work, you know, go to the gym? How do they connect, find running partners, gym buddies, things like that? Another point to think about is really giving the new hires access to a person with expertise who they can talk to throughout the whole move and address any concerns that they may have about the move process. You know, again, where to stay, where to, what to pack, what, when do you book certain things, what are the tips and tricks of, of relocation. You know, and really what we're trying to do here is avoiding you or maybe their parents having to Google their way to a solution. And finally, frequently asked questions. So they, these are very useful. But if you email them out, they probably, most of them, or what we found, most of them don't get read or they'll be filed and, 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 the, and the new hire won't will have a difficult time finding it. So think about having an FAQ smartly integrated and posted to where the new hires go to book housing, for example, to look for a roommate or find out where to eat and, gym and, go, eat and go to the gym. So really about centralizing that information as you do with other onboarding information. Great, so just a follow up to the slides that Jeff presented on, just another poll question, and that's do you use technology to help you uh, manage and support uh, the relocation of interns and new hires? Uh, so this should now be popped up on your screen. If you can just take a moment to provide the feedback about what options you're currently leveraging in your program. And we have just about half of the people have responded. So we'll just give it another few seconds here so everyone has a chance to read the, the options. I know they're a bit longer than the other ones. All right, we're going to go ahead and close this. Just some, some good results on this one. So 60% have limited technology, so they're using things like spreadsheets. Um, 20% use some technology um, and they need to look into other options. 10% are using technology and are happy with how that's working. Um, and the final 10% uh, use technology extensively, such as workflow automation and what have you. Yeah, and again, you know, comparing these these numbers with um, the survey we ran last year, they're pretty actually they're pretty consistent. Um, I think the difference between the first two categories there around limited technology use and some technology has, has changed a little bit, but it's, it's pretty much consistent um, with last year. Okay, so we focus again on on the on some of the best practices. So in terms of benefits, you know, what what benefits should we be providing um, new hires? So for most new hire programs the new hires are at the very least offered temporary housing, flights to their new location, and a small lump sum. And so the first decision that you need to that make is to whether you want to provide support through the provision of benefits and reimbursements or through the payment of a, of a cash lump sum. So we have seen that shift slowly uh, from companies that have traditionally provided lump sums uh, to a more benefits uh, uh, package. So providing the actual benefits themselves, um, the, the, 
the focus here is on really you know, reimbursing travel costs, for example, the provision of accommodation. So these are un will undoubtedly offer the best and safest new hire experience. Companies can be sure that, for example, the temp housing is safe and of a good standard and ensure that the new hire can get easily to and from work each day. The provision of benefits directly also allows the company to potentially reduce their overall costs by benefiting from, again, where applicable, tax exclusions for travel and temporary accommodation costs in, in, in the U, uh, rather than having to gross up some of those costs for, for cash allowances pay. And obviously, you know, rules are different for every, every country. With lump sums, armed with a cash amount to spend at their own discretion, New hires can make bad or uninformed decisions and not use this to support themselves in the way that was intended. Um, we've done a lot of research around having, uh, pr providing corporate credit cards to, to new hires with, with essentially uh, a fixed amount to spend and looking at the top two items that, that most, of the, most of them spend their money on is essentially flat screen TVs and, and couches. So obviously not the way that you'd hope that a new hire would, would, would spend their money on, on a relocation. And so not only is this, a, you know, and I guess you know, we've, we've also heard some horror stories around housing too, so not only is this, can, or can it be a poor and sometimes dangerous experience for your new hires, there is really a zero return on investment for the company on the amounts and the cash that you're paying out to your employees. And so this is why we've seen the rise of this managed budget program so all the administrative and budgeting ease that the lump sum program offers, so, so you know exactly what amount you're going to provide your new hires and you know what it's going to cost the business. It's easy for you to communicate that across the stakeholders. But then the, then the new hire also receives a superior and a more guided experience through uh, support as to how and, and when, I guess, to, to spend their funds. Um, so with, with property, so with temporary housing considerations, here is a couple of things uh, to, to think about. So one, property markets are competitive, uh, I know globally m most markets are, so you need to plan housing early. So some companies plan nine months in advance, so it's therefore imperative for the talent acquisition teams, the mobility teams to collaborate with the workforce planning teams to understand graduate and new hire numbers well in advance. Another point is really to leverage the expertise of relocation and housing management uh, and, 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 and those vendors in, in that space. So these companies can look across their entire client and property portfolio to help schedule placements in housing and optimize on rates when combining volumes from, from a lot of their clients. A thing that's uh, underestimated is really you know, making sure you take out property insurance. There's been countless stories and disputes regarding damaged properties and they take valuable time and effort to resolve, so don't take the risk. And then if you do have roommate pairing, uh, it, it's not as, not as frequent these days, but again, if you do have it, it's you know, navigating those personal requests of who to room with, diversity considerations, personalities, medical, religious needs. Uh, it is difficult and trying to get those get that process automated and, and those surveys, questions um, vetted as soon as you can. Individualized budgets. So individualized budgets, uh, that is the ability to switch on or switch off or scale benefits based on family size, location, travel to location or seniority. This is, this is still um, very prevalent within, within the industry. So you may not want a one-size-fits-all budget as it does create more exceptions which means you're going to have to spend more time dealing with those exceptions which leads obviously to inefficiencies. So, and, and, and the reason, the obvious reason why we're seeing more individualized budgets is because obviously a family of two adults and two children will need different benefits than a single mover. And the final point here is really around exceptions and the importance of reviewing historical exceptions and looking for trends that suggest a need to increase benefits. For example, if you have a 14-day temporary housing policy but find that many are asking for that extra week, 
maybe make it three weeks up front because it, it is easier to, to book three weeks in advance than having to extend for the additional week at the last minute, um, especially where property places are limited. Stakeholder management, uh, so teaming, you know, it sounds simple, but establish who else in the company moves people. Use their contacts, resources, process maps, checklists. And this is especially important with, with the vendors that you use. And vendors. So do you manage internally or do you outsource? That's a key decision. You know, do, you, do you want to be answering all those questions from new hires about their move? Are you able to scale your team quickly? Can you deploy people from other business units to help during busy season? And especially with temporary housing and, a, and the affordability and the availability of temporary housing. Make sure you leverage relationships that other parts of the company may have with other housing providers, for example. Payroll. How will you get reporting done correctly? You know, cash out. Is it manual and how do you track it? You know, are the benefits taxable or not? Do you follow the same process for other parts of your program, for your permanent transfers or your temporary move population? And if talent acquisition is the one who, who looks after the, your new hires, how do you ensure that the processes that you follow within Gold Mobility are also followed by the talent acquisition teams? Finance. So they need to ensure the costs are forecasted and budgeted for. Where will these costs go? Cost centers. Are, they, are you setting them up in time? And how are you going to track and, and cross charge effectively? And then for hiring managers, understanding workforce planning numbers 12 months in advance to help with housing and, and budgeting is very important. With payroll, uh, so with, with reporting, again, it's important to, to track expenses and, um, and, and actual amounts and compare against what you had budgeted for. And a common pitfall that we see is a lot of companies fail to track gross ups. So always watch out for, for the gross ups on those taxable benefits. Tax, um, taking, uh, you know, make sure that you take advantage of tax benefits. I know it's something which we mentioned before. So providing some benefits um, gets you a tax exemption, uh, whereas providing cash is obviously, um, you have to gross the, those up. Um, so just making sure that, that, that where benefits are, are, are concessionally or exempt from tax, you could potentially take advantage of those. And other regimes around the world, uh, for example, in say India, Australia, New Zealand have other non-cash benefit regimes, fringe benefits tax regimes. It's making sure that that you understand that those rules and 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 really the importance between providing those benefits, whereas giving versus giving a, a cash amount to the provision of those benefits. A lot of those countries, it, it, it's an important distinction between the two as to whether you get things taxable or not taxable. Diversity, diversity, you know, it, it's a big um, the thing that we're seeing at the moment. So it's really the, the, the need for new hires and new hire programs to be more, more diverse and to have more support structures in place to make it successful. So many senior executives at organisations have worked outside their home country. In a PwC report last year, it found that 70% of females would like to work outside of their home country but really only one in four global assignees are female. And this stat hasn't changed for, I think, nearly a decade. So whilst many organisations have increased their focus on gender diversity, it's had little, if any, impact on female participation in global mobility. And so the question is essentially, you know, why is this relevant and why is this relevant for new hires? And so research that, that we've done is, is, is obviously, we, we, we found that there is an inherent gender bias that exists throughout the assignment life cycle, starting at the recruitment and selection process. And so some of the solutions that we recommend include, one is you know, really research that we've done has found that if you make international opportunities available to female employees at an earlier stage of their career, it greatly increases female participation in mobility. And again, for your new hire programs, this is the best way to start. Any steps that you can take to help female uh, assignees and their families build social networks 
whether formal or informal, in the host location can significantly contribute towards the success of the relocation. Traditional male-centric social and support networks may not be the best fit for um, the female assignee and her family. And finally, here, here are some seven checklist points. Um, one, forecast new hire numbers early and consider temporary housing options far in advance to receive the best housing rates and options available. Two, be clear and communicate exactly what the new hire will and won't receive and what to expect during their relocation. This will help limit the number of ad hoc requests you know, back and forth with your teams caused by ambiguity. Three, prepare for the influx of questions and create a system to handle them. This could be outsourced through a business partner or handled through a single email address or phone line. Think about how they can find more information about their move or location. Are all resources in one centralized place for them? Is information presented in the way that they that it, that it, that it's there for them to best absorb? Fourth, you know, things will go wrong. Have an action plan in place to handle any issues such as delayed travel, lost luggage, etc. Five, consider whether you're making the most of technology. So, is there a single source of data on your new high population? Are you collecting and sharing your population's information consistently? And is the data safe? Six, have you understood what other, what other parts of the business need from you to help them in their role? Have you understood how you can leverage other parts of the business to create a world-class onboarding experience for the new hires? And finally, having a solid process in place for collecting feedback on your program for your business lines and new hires is important. So it's really understanding what has worked and why it works, what needs to be improved, and what noise did you hear from business managers about new hires. It's really about tracking that so that you can make the program a lot better in the following year. So that's essentially um, the information, uh, you know, so some of the best practices and, and the checklists for, for new hires. Um, and just a, a little bit around technology and how we deploy technology at Move Guides. It's really just to create that single platform that connects your HR teams, vendors, talent acquisition, different relocation vendors that are suited for new hires and the cheaper alternatives, and the employees themselves. And getting all those different parties and those processes onto that single platform to really drive the employee experience, but also the new hire team. So whether that's talent acquisition or global mobility, get ensuring that their experience is also world class. Great, thanks Jeff for <clears throat> taking the time to put together that presentation. Uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to input them now. We do have uh, a couple of questions that have come in and alternatively, you're also welcome to send Jeff an email at any time. It's a pretty e easy email to remember. It's just jeff at moveguides.com. So Jeff, the, the first question that um, come in is how important is it to differentiate your policies or strategies between internal transfers and those new hires? Yeah. Um, so there's, uh, I guess there's a couple of nuances that we've seen, I think, for existing clients. And, and one, for those that, that do provide a lump sum, it, it's, you know, the big one there is timing. You know, do a lot of companies will provide a lump sum, they generally have a rule of you know, whether it's two weeks or, or a month before the transfer date, and oftentimes you know, we find that expenses are being incurred much earlier than that. And so for existing hires, it, it's, I guess, a lot easier. They're already set up on payroll, they're an existing, obviously they're an existing employee. And so for those employees, sometimes what we've seen companies do is make the payments and, and offer those, those relocation benefits earlier. So earlier before before the before 30 days um, of, of their move date, 
Um, new hires, it, it, it's still a challenge at times because you know, they're not on payroll. You're oftentimes waiting for a repayment agreement to, to take place. But trying to shift um, the, the timing you know, as, as early as possible, trying to get those payments and getting them um, offered, uh, getting them you know, with, with their benefits at a much earlier time. I know there are some challenges, but, but if you can do it for your existing hires, certainly, certainly do that. Great, thanks Jeff. Um, the second question that's come in is, we don't currently have a tech platform, but are starting to investigate options. Uh, what are the benefits that your customers are experiencing using a platform such as the one you offer? Yeah, um, I think it's really around efficiency and, and, and the user experience. So we, we've seen um, a few teams that it is quite a manual and administrative task and taking those tasks away and, and redeploying those employees to more strategic parts of the business and, and more helping them become a, a, you know, better business partners. I think that's you know been one of the one of the big one of the big key takeaways. So you know, you know increase efficiency and improve the experience. Um, risk is another one that, that we've found. Um, so obviously from a PII risk, we're, you know, that's trying to eliminate that through the use of, of, of technology. But then also in terms of errors, uh, you're not getting any transposition errors, you're not getting other human uh, errors as well, that a, a lot of that um, you know, by, by streamlining um, that whole process. Um, so yeah, so, so there's they're some of the benefits. User experience, um, uh, I increase um, efficiencies, uh, reduction of, of, of risk. Great, thanks Jeff. Uh, and so with that, we don't have any other questions at this time. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the webinar. I uh, want to thank everyone again for taking the time to be with us today. If you have any questions or, or follow-up thoughts or concerns, please do send us a note. And thank you to Jeff for taking the time to present to everyone. Have a great day.